Hey everybody, it's Silvershim, and welcome back to the Blender Solar System. Last time, we took a look at Jupiter and its moons, and now we're moving on to planet Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun and the second largest planet in the solar system. It was named after the Roman god of agriculture and the father of Jupiter. To the Greeks, he was known as the Titan Kronos. Now, like Jupiter, Saturn is a gas giant, mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. But the specific makeup of Saturn make it the least dense planet, to the point where, even though it has over 760 times Earth's volume, it's only about 95 times as massive as Earth. So, Saturn has a diameter of around 120,000 kilometers, which is about 9.5 Earths wide, and it is the most oblate planet. All the planets, to some degree, are wider than they are tall because of their rotation, but Saturn is the most obvious example of this. You it's slight, but noticeable. Again, despite its size, it is the only planet less dense than water. Saturn rotates in just over ten and a half hours, the second fastest of the planets after Jupiter. And like Jupiter, it undergoes differential rotation, rotating faster at its equator than at its poles. Saturn is tilted on its axis by about 27 degrees, and as such, experiences seasons which can be seen in the coloring in its clouds. Saturn's most notable feature, of course, is its ring system. which are the most visible and complex of the ring systems in the solar system. It has many components, as you can see here, some a lot more visible than the others, and there are even more detailed components that I didn't show here. Just wanted to show the major parts, and you can kind of see the expansive E-ring. That encompasses many of Saturn's moons. The Saturnian system has a grand total of 82 known moons, more than any other planet in the solar system. But it's a bit subject to debate, as astronomers typically try to avoid counting the millions of small particles within Saturn's rings. But anyway, seven of Saturn's moons are large enough to be round under their own gravity. And from inner to outer, they are Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, Dione, Rhea, Titan, and Iapetus. As Saturn's Greek equivalent was the Titan Kronos, these moons are named after related figures in Greek mythology, Titan, of course, being the generic name for the race. Iapetus is named after a specific Titan. Rhea, Tethys, and Dione, or Titanesses, are female Titans. Rhea, notably, was the wife of Kronos, and the mother of the gods. And Mimas and Enceladus were giants. Now, taking a close look at each of them. 
Titan is Saturn's largest moon and the first to be discovered, and it is also the second largest moon in the solar system after Jupiter's Ganymede. Like Ganymede, it is larger than Mercury, but it is only one-third as massive as Mercury. Titan is about 5,000 kilometers in diameter, and it is the only moon with a significant atmosphere. And it's a fairly thick one as well, obscuring its surface from view, similar to Venus's atmosphere. Discovered on March 25th, 1655 by Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens. The next moon to be discovered was Iapetus on October 25th, 1671 by Italian astronomer Giovanni Cassini. Iapetus is Saturn's third largest moon and it is known for its dramatic two-tone colorization. Black on one side, white on the other. The third moon to be discovered was Rhea, Saturn's second largest moon, discovered on December 23rd, 1672, also by Cassini. Rhea and Iapetus are both around 1,500 kilometers across. Rhea, of course, is slightly larger, though. And apparently there are rumors of Rhea having rings of its own, but I don't think they have been confirmed. Possibility, though. Next up, Tethys and Dione. Saturn's fifth and fourth largest moons, respectively, were both discovered by Cassini on March 21st, 1684. Here's Tethys and Dione. Tethys is known for having a very low density compared to other moons in the solar system. And next, Enceladus and Mimas, Saturn's sixth and seventh largest moons, were both discovered by William Herschel. of Germany and Great Britain. Enceladus discovered on August 28th, 1789, and Mimas on September 17th, 1789. Compared to Dione at about 1,100 kilometers and Tethys at about 1,000 kilometers, Enceladus is only 500 kilometers across but it is one of the most reflective bodies in the solar system. As you can see, it's got a very snow-white surface. And then there's Mimas at only 400 kilometers across. Now, Mimas is known for this large crater known as Herschel, which from some angles makes the moon resemble the Death Star. Which is purely coincidental since Star Wars was made a few years before the crater could even be seen.
Now, taking a look at their orbits. I'm going to move Saturn's rings just to, so you can see them better. All seven of these moons are tidally locked to Saturn, always showing the same face. Mimas orbits at around 186,000 kilometers from Saturn in about 22.6 hours. And Celadus is about 238,000 kilometers away and orbits in 33 hours. Tethys at about 295,000 kilometers, orbits in 1.9 days. Dione at 377,000 kilometers, about 2.7 days. Rhea at around 527,000 kilometers, takes about four and a half days. Titan at about 1.2 million kilometers, takes around 16 days. And finally, Iapetus, quite a bit further out, at 3.5 million kilometers, takes about 79 days to orbit Saturn. Most of their orbits are pretty much circular, though you'll notice Iapetus' orbit is quite a bit inclined from Saturn's equator. That makes it so it is the only moon from which you could clearly see Saturn's rings. Saturn's rings are quite are actually quite thin, so from the moons that orbit within its equatorial plane, they would be pretty much too thin to see. As for Saturn's 75 other moons, they are of course small and irregularly shaped. Among the inner moons, one noticeable member is Hyperion. It was the first of Saturn's smaller moons to be discovered. It itself is named after a Titan. And it has a resonance with Titan, such that for every three orbits Hyperion makes, Titan makes four. Most of the rest of these inner moons orbit within Saturn's rings. Two of them are especially noticeable. You'll see how there appear to be two sets of three moons that share an orbit. Well, this here is Tethys and this is Dione. And each of these large moons have two tro Trojan moons. which orbit at stable points in, in their orbits around 60 degrees ahead and behind the moons. For Tethys, these moons are Telesto, the leading Trojan, and Calypso, the trailing Trojan. And for Dione, leading is Hellene, and trailing is Polydeuces. And like the major moons, these moons are named after Greek titans and giants. However, I guess they figured they'd eventually run out of Greek myths to use because most of Saturn's other moons do not get their names from Greek. though they still get their names from Titans and Giants, and are grouped based on the mythology that they come from. 
The Inuit group has seven moons. These still have prograde orbits, but they're very elliptical and inclined. Not all of Saturn's moons are named, of course. And then there's the largest group, the Norse group, with 46 moons. Now, these moons have retrograde orbits. Now, not all of these moons actually actually get their names from Norse mythology, because there's one with a Greek name, and that's Phoebe. And the reason it has a Greek name is, is because it was discovered quite a bit before all the rest. And finally, there's the Gaelic group with only four. And these have prograde orbits. Now, of course, most of Saturn's outer moons are not actually tidally locked. Hyperion in particular, is notable for not really rotating at all. It just seems to spin wildly and chaotically, a behavior seen in some other moons of the solar system. But anyway, that's Saturn and its moons, so how about we move on to Saturn's orbit? So, here we are in the solar system now with Saturn. Saturn orbits the Sun at a distance of about 1.4 billion kilometers, which is just over 10 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And I don't think it's a legitimate orbital resonance, but it's notable that for every approximately five orbits Jupiter makes, Saturn makes two as it has an orbital period of just under 29 and a half years. Looking closer at Saturn. I only have its most visible rings modeled, as well as those seven moons we talked about before. And finally, let's get a view of Saturn from Earth. Saturn can be seen with just the eye. And there we go, we can see some of its moons alongside it. And its rings are nice and visible. Though not always, because of how thin the rings are, there are some points within Saturn's orbits where the rings appear to disappear from view as we are viewing them head on. So, that's Saturn. Next time on the Blender Solar System, we're going to move on to the next planet. See you then.